And after that, C5 was played in the game, uh, to which H5 happened, and uh, white is ready to push that pawn even further to H6. So one of the ideas that we mentioned already is that we are trying to open as many files and diagonals as we can for our pieces, but very often we are okay to push the pawns as far as possible and to create weaknesses. So here, every once in a while, white will be happy to go actually H6. And whenever this pawn goes to G6, there will be the weakness of the dark squares happening on the king side. So this is why Navarra decided to stop the advance of that pawn once and for all by playing the move H6. But by doing so, he's creating a weakness on H6. We call this weakness a hook. And hooks are extremely important for us and extremely good things to have in the opponent's position as those hooks are pawns which are fixed, they're not going anywhere. And it's easier for us to get into conflict with those pawns. Meaning that now if we push the pawn all the way to g5, black would be forced to make a decision. He cannot just ignore us and push the pawn next to ours. He will have to either trade or he will have to stay, but in either case, we're going to take on h6 and we're going to open a foul. So this is the reason why h6 is not a very good move, but Navarra, I believe, of course, he knew that if g4 and g5 is coming easily, he shouldn't play like that. But Navarra had an idea to block the king side with the move f6. Okay, so what we now does is he castles long and after knight b8, which was the plan that we were talking about, he starts pushing the pawns on the king side with some preparation. First he did the move rook to g1. Actually, the immediate g4 was also possible and if you have opposite castlings, this is a very standard idea. As I told you at the beginning, and as you agreed with me, uh, white is very happy to open files for the rook. So he is actually happy to give away the pawn. And what will happen if black takes it with the bishop? Well, he's going to win a pawn, but he's going to lose the half open g file. And on that line, as we said, we're in introducing five pawns immediately into the attack. You can see the rooks are getting in. The rook is now very dangerously placed against the opponent's king. So he's ready to attack him. He's almost there. And uh, it is hitting not only the bishop, but the pawn on g7. If now black tries to defend it with queen d7, well, he's not going to do this for very long. There'll be rook h4, and after bishop f3 and queen f3, uh, you can see that black's um, king side is already in big trouble. Bishop h6 is the threat. Let's say that black defends himself with king h7. Is he really going to defend himself? What do you think? How about we find now a chance to use all the power of those major pieces to attack him on the king side? You tell me, what do you see here for black? How can we attack him at the moment? Rook takes g7. Already we have some interesting suggestions. On the open file, we want to sacrifice a rook, and eventually we want to follow up on the open file with our pieces. They would like to come closer. Bishop takes h6, another idea. Rook h to g4. Okay, so already three very interesting ideas. Both of them are um, based on the fact that we want to attack along the g file, and the others are based on the fact that we want to attack on the h file as well. Rook takes h7, uh, g7, excuse me, is investing way too much material. Uh, the other idea is actually better here concretely. Sometimes rook g7 can be also working in situations like that, so you definitely need to calculate all those things. But bishop h6 is a killer already. It is completely destroying black's position. For example, if he takes with the pawn, now the g file has been open for the white pieces and queen g3, leaves black defendless against the queen g7 threat. It's a mate. Notice that the knight on b8 is still standing there. If it wasn't there, black would be able to defend himself with rook g8, but he's one tempo behind. He cannot use his rook. And if he defends uh, with the queen by pushing the pawn on f6, okay, then we can give queen g6, we're penetrating, then we're taking pawn number one, pawn number two, next move is going to be checkmate. So definitely he cannot play like that. He cannot take um, on h6 with the pawn, but what if he takes with the king? Isn't he defending himself? Aren't the files still blocked? 
or is there something that we can do? Any ideas? How to reach the king on the open, half open files? Queen G3 or already one suggestion. Okay, any, anywhere, rook G6, another suggestion, yes. So we are going to use the rook G6 idea, but after we occupy the G file with queen G3 or queen G2, it's all the same, it doesn't really matter. There is no principal difference. We are threatening checkmate, so they will have to defend with rook G8. And now, what comes next? Queen G6, wonderful. You're very, very much alert and you already see clearly that the checkmate is happening on the G and the H files. Exactly the files that we have opened for our rooks. First the G file, now the H file. And this is ultimately what we are looking for. This is what we want to get at the end of the day. And you can see those 10 pawns into the attack, nicely attacking the king and delivering the checkmate. Black was trying to defend also with a lot of pawns, the queen and the rook in some, in some lines, but they were not as flexible. They were not as quick as our pieces, which were in the attack. Our pieces are dominating, so they have even more strength than those five pawns. If you have an open file, your, your rook's activity almost doubles. Uh, so therefore, this is why it is so important for us to open the files as quick as possible. And one more line here, if they take on f3 after queen takes f3, we're still threatening to capture on h6 and on f7. And all in all, uh, white is going to regain the pawn and after that he's going to attack for free. So this is the reason why the move g4 was interesting, but when he decided to go rook g1, he did not forget about opening the game on the king side. Actually, he wants to have the rook on the g file ready to open it. But what if black just simply blocks the position, which was obviously Navarra's idea. He wants to block the position, he wants to make sure his king is safe. Next he jumps knight e4, he's going to trade his defender on f3 and starts pushing his pawns on the king side. b5, c5, a5, a4. Isn't that too dangerous for white? Already an idea, g5. Wow. Knight e3, another idea. All right, other ideas, people. G5, Anirut and Vanik, both of them, they suggest the move G5. This is very brave. Are you going to play it in the real game? Knight H4, Knight G6. Honestly speaking, when I was annotating this game for uh, for particular chess site, I was also thinking that this is the, the main thing that white is getting for. Knight H4 followed by Knight F5. I expected white to play this and then to bring the knight on f5, start threatening some sacrifices on g7, h6, and eventually when black trades it, take with the g pawn, open the file. But this is very slow. Those of you who have suggested the move g5, and there were many, which is great, are actually quite right. Not only that you are ready to sacrifice pawns, very often you are ready to sacrifice pieces too. And again, it's worth it. In most of the cases, it is worth it, as you have so many attacking units coming into the attack after that. The rook, the rooks, the queen, those are the main performers. If you can keep them alive, and if you give them a little bit of support, even one pawn could be enough now to, um, to destroy the opponent's position. Why not 93? That's a good question. 93 was, of course, a possibility, but to this one, most likely black is going to play 94. He's going to trade this knight. Then this knight will come on f5, most likely. And now black can even take it, actually, and then start defending after, say, this king moves away somewhere, maybe king h8, and then he can start defending along the seventh rank, rook e7, or maybe first bishop f8, rook e7, queen d7, and he'll be defending himself. Also, yes, queen g4, you can keep on attacking, this is true, but okay, now bishop f8 is not a great idea because of bishop h6, but let's say that black is defending with, with queen d7. And uh, next, rook g8. Actually, honestly speaking, I think that bishop takes f5 was premature and black should have defended with bishop f8, trying to keep the position as blocked as possible and not to give a chance to white to bring all his pieces into the action. And only later in a good moment to take on f5. This was the traditional way of playing it. I don't say it is bad. 
but it is slower and you will see clearly than what happened in the game because G5 is just crashing at least to to enormous attack uh, for the first player. So, okay, we have G5, black has to take it, and then white is sacrificing the piece. And that was the idea, to open both the files. Now, if black captures on G5 with the H pawn, there will be a bishop takes G5, and white's attack is very strong. I'm going to give you just a couple of lines. If the queen comes on D7, bishop f6. Look at this maneuver by the bishop. The bishop also got into the attack. Not only the rook, but the bishop also got into the attack. Black has to defend himself with his bishop, and then we are inserting even more pieces into the attack. The rook from h1 is getting in. The rook on g1, the queen, the pawn, everybody is there. Next, we're going to take on g7. Rook h8 is coming, and g8 queen even. So this is horrible for the second player. If he tries uh, a move like bishop e7, to trade our nice diff attacker on g5, there will be even bishop takes e7 move. And then the attack continues in the very typical way. h6, we open the road for that pawn. There was a pawn on h6 before that, you remember that. But now we're opening the road for that pawn. And if he tries to keep it as blocked as possible, if he tries to hide behind our h pawn, this will be the best strategy for him. But then we are bringing more attackers. The queen is getting in. Then on g4, we can go knight e3, and that pawn would be gone. So first of all, we are regaining one more pawn, and after that, we are having already two pawns, but we are using the open files for our pieces. So next, if they are not careful, if they open the files prematurely like that, with rook g7, we are going to simply destroy them with check, followed by another check and again these two files have been opened i told you at the beginning the main attackers of the queen and the rook it's a huge attacking potential so there is nothing they can do check check let's take the queen first with a check next we're going to take the rook we are taking the house if we're not delivering checkmate we're just taking everybody there is nothing they can do so most likely after rook g7 they will have to defend with queen f6 and maybe this was mm -hmm. navarro's best chance uh, to try and to play for or something to defend himself. But I pretty much suspect that he wouldn't have survived here neither, as white has huge compensation for the sacrifice piece, already two pawns, but also huge activity for his pieces. He can afford playing even something like king b1, away from the possible checks, followed by a3, he can open the air for the king so that he, he doesn't get checkmated on the back rank some reason ah, okay so he has some air and next rook will come on g1 and then he will have um, a way he will have to find a way for in the opponent's position but he will find one for sure but navara actually thought that there is nothing wrong with him bringing this knight on d4 and this of course makes a lot of sense why not bring the knight closer uh, to the king side when it can be uh, used for the defense of the king side with a move like 96 the problem here is that after queen d1,